Her St. Joan was excellent. Everybody said so. But drama school is five long months away. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. The profession is overcrowded, and the struggle is pretty tough. Fifty interviews away. I can tell you something, there's nothing at the moment, but if you'd like to come in next week, we'll see what we can do. Sorry, no, there's nothing today for you. Sorry, dear, nothing today. A hundred letters away, with photo and stamped addressed envelope. Six pound ten a week. Assistant stage manager. Weekly rep. Music Hall gave up the ghost. Only the rep is alive and kicking. You can take a seat, Mr. Worthing. Thank you, Lady Bracknell. I prefer standing. I feel bound to tell you that you are not down on my list of eligible young men, although I have the same list as the dear Duchess of Bolton has. We work together, in fact. However, I am quite ready to enter your name, should your answers be what a really affectionate mother requires. Do you smoke? Well, yes, I must admit I smoke. <laughs> depression, is it not? I believe the aristocracy are suffering very much from it just at present. It is almost an epidemic amongst them, I have been told. May I offer you some tea, Miss Fairfax? Thank you. Detestable girl, but I require tea. Sugar? No, thank you. Sugar is not fashionable anymore. Uh, okay, well, stop there and have the coffee. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do you do, Mayor? Eh? Pleased to meet you. I hope you'll be very happy here. Now, would you like a coffee? Yeah. How do you do? Matthew Thompson. Hello, Mayor. What kind of people are they? The raggle taggle gypsies, oh. As varied and surprising as the muddle of props under the stage. <laughs> The audience here are proud of their rep. The town may not support it with hard cash as a municipal duty, but the people regard it with affection and with pleasure. Oh, you were good last week. How do you manage to learn all the words? Don't you ever get your parts mixed? Hey, I'll bet you have a fine old time, you repertory lot.
What is it this week? Comedy thriller? Oh, well, I suppose we'll get through it. God knows we've got through them before. Hostage. What is the time to be dead gone now? I don't know yet. Wait a minute. What a very small world it is, to be sure. Are you addressing me, sir? What are you doing here? The parent clocks are looking for Sergeant Bassett, perhaps. I don't think we've met. Oh, this is your next door neighbour, Windy Ridge. That does not happen to be my name. Look at the time. I've been recollecting either of you before. But somehow your face is familiar. But not so obviously familiar as your manner. Do you know what the time is? Certainly I do. It's time to go. Oh, no. What is that? Your uncle's revolver, Mr. Hawkins. And unlike him, I'm not relying on the visual effect. This man is either as drunk as a lord or as mad as a hatter, I wonder which. You've got just 30 seconds to tell us where you put it. Put what? I'll tell you nothing's happened here. What do you mean, blown up? Unless we told me. Who? He did it. That's him. Oh, he did, did he? Oh, the old place is going to be blown sky high. That's right. In just under 30 seconds. Isn't that so, Mr. Hawkins? The man is just drunk. Will you kindly conduct your argument somewhere else? This place is bedlam. Bill, the time! Wait a minute. And then I will be able to listen. Uh, this time. Then you're Sir Gregory. It's on the radio. That's your voice. It must be in here. Stand back, everybody. <laughs> what on earth was that? Only after it had been blown away. Pop upstairs and tell him it's all right. No bones broken. indeed, ladies and gentlemen, for your reception tonight. Next week, we are presenting for you that most famous of all Lancashire comedies, Hobson's Choice by Harold Brighouse. So until next week, when we hope to see you again, thank you and good night. <laughs>
Just check over those words, will you? I believe it's very good this week because I've seen it a few times before, you know. I've seen it played a few times before, but I have heard it's very good this week, very good indeed. Mm -hmm. And what part are you taking next week in the Sailor's Beware? Henry Hornet. Oh, he's a henpecked husband. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Eh? You'll enjoy that, won't you? Yeah, well, it'll give you some idea of it, what it'll be like when you get married. <laughs> of course, if you do, you know. I suppose you will in time, won't you? Yes, well, I hope so. Is there anything else going on at the theatre new? Anything going off? I like to know, I like to know what's going off, you know. And then I can tell all my friends about it, you know. Let's have the radio on, shall we, Jack? <laughs> David, come down more to him, will you? I'm right. Right down, glad to see you, Mr. Austin. Final run through. The fifth day of rehearsal. And the last. Well, I don't know. Don't overdo it, Will. Sit down, Father, for five minutes. The sofa will bear your weight. It's been tested. Look, top end of the sofa. Teapot. Maybe a bit down. more room there. Yeah, down down further down. There's, more, there's another foot of table there. Yeah. I'm a decent minded man. I'm obstinate, British, middle class, proud of it. I stand for common sense and sincerity. You're affected, which is bad sense and insincerity. You've overstepped grand dressing and you've tried this. What is it, You've overstepped nice dressing. Sorry. Um, you've overstepped nice dressing and you've tried grand dressing, which is the occupation. Am I in the right position, Harry? Yes, yes, you're right. Which is the occupation of fools and such as them that have no brains. I'm a decent minded man. I'm option. British, middle class, and proud of it. I stand for common sense and sincerity, you're affected, which is bad sense and insincerity. You forget the majesty of trade and the unparalleled virtues of the British... Not quite St. Joan, perhaps. Three lines in the second act. A spit and a cough. Hey, a lot and it could say on, it'll make no difference to me. <laughs> Willie Mossop, you're going to marry me. Nay, I'm, I'm not. You, you see, what makes it so desperate awkward is, I'm talking. <laughs> you're what? I'm talking, Dada Figgins. Then you'll get loose and quick. <laughs> Who is Dada Figgins, anyway? Do I know her? I'm lodger at her mother's. <laughs> that scheming cousin. Oh, I know it. That dark hair girl that brings you lunch. She's brave and airy, Dada. I should be here soon. And so shall I. I'll talk to Ada. I've met her on all the breed. Ada's selfless sort. Hey, she's here now. <laughs> There's your dinner, Will. Thanks, Ada. I want a word with you, young woman. You're treading on my foot. Me, Miss Hobson? What's this between you and him? Oh, Miss Hobson, that is good of you to take notice like that. Ada, she... You hold your rush. This is for her and me to settle. Take a fair look at him, Ada. At uh, will. Not much for two women to fall out over, is there? And you've no business here. That's the new one. Are you going to see me all about? Her shop, Ada. When it comes to a part, and it's best to part sudden and no whimpering. I'm not whimpering. Can't judge, really. Still, she looks quite nice. I'd like to see her in a bigger part. That'll do. Well, Mother, I'm telling you, you'll come home tonight to a thick ear. <laughs> You're going to waste a great lot of brass at chemists if I'm at you for a week with this. I'm not wanting that, Maggie. It's her that's after me. But I'll tell you this. If you lay on that hand on me with that strap, I'll take her. I and I'll stick to her like glue. There's never one answer to that kind of talk. And I've never one answer back. Maggie, I haven't kissed you yet. I shirked it before, but by gum, I'll kiss you now. I'll take and hold you. And if Mr. Robson raises that strap to me again, I'll do more. I'll walk out of this shop with you, and us two will set up for ourselves. Willie, I knew you had it in you. Well, 
Willie's the one for speeches. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, for your wonderful reception tonight. Next week, we have pleasure in presenting to you Sailor Beware. Good night to you all, and thank you. Got through another one. Just time for a quick one before they close. Nice to relax. <laughs> nice to get away from the theatre for five minutes into the real world and talk about the theatre. And is the game really worth the candle? Is it worth slogging your guts out week after week, buried in the provinces, when you can sit around in London living on the odd TV part? For many, perhaps it isn't. But where else can you learn the job?